how do you fight something with invisible weapons, unnatural strength, speed, and stamina with no known weaknesses? I don't know, but I have an idea how to get rid of it. The Bicock is a creature that only the Okachita need to worry about. But before you get all excited, Okachita means warriors. And from what I can tell, that doesn't differentiate between Native American warriors and modern day soldiers. In fact, I'm not even sure there's much of a line drawn between a warrior and a man or woman who's out hunting. Or if someone simply goes into the woods armed and appears to be a warrior. But if you are concerned about running into a Bicock and you want to know how to ward off this evil spirit, then be sure to stick around. It's always better to know something unnecessarily than it is to not know something critical. So what are these creatures exactly? Where do they come from? And most importantly, how do you defeat, destroy, or escape one if necessary? Well, a Bicock is born whenever a warrior dies a dishonorable or shameful death. And this could happen because he was surrendering, or maybe he went into battle boasting and disrespected the opposition, and decided to mess around and find out, if you get my meaning. There's not necessarily any one form of death that is guaranteed to make a Bicock, but as long as it's a dishonorable one, then there's a possibility that one will rise from the dead. So not every shameful death creates a Bicock, but every Bicock is created by a shameful death. And it's not only how they died, but how their body was treated afterward. It's said that if the warrior's bones were scattered over a large distance or even thrown in a lake, then he would be unable to rest, unable to move on, and therefore would walk the earth for the rest of eternity as a Bicock. These evil spirits are fairly easy to spot. You're not likely to confuse it with anything else, except maybe a Wendigo. You see, similar to a Wendigo, they appear as an emaciated skeleton with clear or see-through skin. And in some variations, they're nothing but the bones of the fallen warrior. Whatever the warrior was wearing when he died is what the Bicock continues to wear for the rest of its days. Their eyes glow red in the dark of the night and are equipped with several weapons to ensure their hunt for human flesh is always successful. One of which is a heavy war club that is used to violently strike and bludgeon its prey. However, its preferred weapon of choice is a very powerful bow with arrows dipped in poison that are invisible to the human eye. As for the poison, it's said to cause the body to be completely numb while putting the victim into a deep sleep for many hours. During this time, the Bicock begins to feast upon the fallen warrior, but it doesn't always immediately kill. It takes its stance above the prey and pulls out a small silver knife and carefully cuts into the abdomen, and through this opening, pulls out the liver and gorges itself upon it. During this time, you can't feel anything. You can't feel the arrow being pulled out of you, you can't feel the knife cutting you open, and you can't feel the Bicock ripping out your liver. In fact, you may not even realize anything's wrong until you wake up the next day, and even then, maybe not. You see, the Bicock has this magic thread, and it will use it to sew up the opening that it made for your liver, but not before it places a rock inside of you. This magic thread is then used to heal you in such a way that the wound was never there. You don't see a scar or a scratch or anything. And I imagine it uses this on the arrow wound as well. Some warriors have been known to wake the next day and continue on living for up to another few weeks without ever realizing that their liver's gone. And then they just slowly die because it's not there to filter out their everyday toxins. It's a very slow and painful way to go. But in other situations, the Bicock wakes until you're asleep and violently clubs you to death. And it's pretty easy to tell when you're being stalked by one of these things as well, because you'll hear its bones rattling through the woods as it follows you. And it's also known to let loose a shrill cry as it flies through the forest. But also luckily, this is said to only be in the woods of the Great Lakes region. It's really nice that these monsters abide by borders and rules. <laughs> the Bicock is from the Anishinaabe, Arizukan, and its name is translated to skeleton. But that doesn't mean you could just knock it over like you were playing Skyrim. You would need something that is probably lost to time now, and that's the knowledge of where this warrior died and where its bones are. Other than that, there is no known weaknesses. You can shoot it as much as you want, and it does nothing. You can't really stab it because you would need to be able to hit some sort of vital organ, and it doesn't really have that. Now, I have heard that because it's nothing but bone, you can try to smash it to pieces and burn the bones to nothing but ash, but I doubt even that would work. You're assuming this creature obeys the laws of nature, and its existence alone is an affront to the basic laws of which we are all bound. Since these are said to be spirits, I imagine that the Bicock is conjuring up and giving itself the most rudimentary body it can. That's why it appears as only a skeleton, and sometimes just skin on bones. It would probably just reform itself after the fire was gone. You can't really kill what's already dead. Regardless of who the Bicock was during life, whether it be a good man, a bad man, or just a dirtbag overall, I'd say the only way to defeat this evil spirit is by finding his bones, gathering them together, and giving it a proper burial. Once you do this, I would think that it allows the Bicock to finally move on from this world onto the next. And whether that place is good or bad is 
it's not up to us. Other than that, I'd probably schedule a visit with your doctor if you randomly wake up in the middle of the woods. But the majority of you watching, even if you are a warrior, are typically safe. Most of you should take solace in knowing the Bicock stays far away from society. It simply refuses to go near it, whether the town be big or small. Also, if you like this kind of stuff, then head over to Patreon and check out some extra content that you won't get to see here. Or if you prefer, check out this video YouTube seems to think you'll love. Either way, I'll see you there.